Builders, I'm Jake Adams and I have a very special video for you uh, because I have a lot of leftover footage from Live Aquario. So this entire video is basically an excuse for me to just show you some amazing footage of the peppermint angelfish from Live Aquaria and some of the cool displays and uh, fish and corals and stuff that they had there. Um, but before we get started, I have a little bit of administrative things to get out of the way. First of all, um, the Reef Builder shirts are available from our first merchandise provider, Reef Tees. Check the link in the description if you want to get your own because uh, Mac is coming up and you want to be like all the cool kids and be wearing your Reef Builder shirt. Um, it'll be identical to this, except it won't say Reef Stock on the bottom. And if you've been watching the Reef Builders t-shirts and the Reef Stock t-shirts uh, over the last few years, you'll know that you know we do kind of a different colorway um, once a year. So these will be you know somewhat limited edition. But uh, even more importantly, less than a month, actually in two weeks, I will be traveling to Australia because in less than a month, we have our second edition of Reef Stock Australia. Last year, Last year was so much work to put together the first time and we did not have any idea what to expect. We just tried our hardest and uh, almost a thousand people from around Australia and neighboring countries showed up and it was just such a treat to and get to learn and get to meet a whole different subset of the reef aquarium community. Um, people who are, you know, have a completely different aquascaping style or interested in completely different styles of corals or have the completely different preferences for aquarium devices. So um, that was, it was such a, a really, really cool event. And then this year we got uh, the one and only Julian Sprung. You can ask him anything about anything. He'll have some kind of good answer for you. Uh, Chris Cap is one of my favorite aquarium of the last 15 years, this guy has been so, he's had the touch for growing stony corals. I love going to his shop and him like self-deprecating a little bit about what he's like missing out on because he's so good at so many other things, um, especially stony corals. And then Vincent Chalice, uh, my good coral buddy who has actually spent a lot of time in Australia uh, on the Great Barrier Reef this year. And he's gonna give a presentation on the iconic corals of Australia. And so for more information about Reefstock Australia, go to www.reefstock.show for all the event details and for up to the minute announcements and especially um, all the details of uh, like uh, the raffle prizes and what the companies are going to be bringing out as far as like coral frags, um, go to the Reefstock Australia Facebook event page. So all those links for the t-shirt for Reefstock Australia, the, the event page, it's all going to be in the description down below. Whew. All right, so now we got all the administrative stuff out of the way. We can have a little bit of fun, but first I need to introduce my co-host, my guest star. Say hi, Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. This is the family dog. This is Charlie, the uh, Australian Shepherd, and um, kidnapped him for about a week or so so he can spend some time with me at the studio and in the foothills of Golden playing outside. <laughs> he loves it even though he's a little bit tired right now. Right, Charlie? You doing all right, buddy? Oh my goodness, he loves it. All right, so let's get started. And he's over. No, come back, come back, come back. There you go, there you go. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get started checking out some of this footage from Live Aquarium. We'll dive, just drive right in. Lots of 
frags, lots of frags, lots of frags. They propagate a lot, and actually, believe it or not, this is the main frag room right above. You're going to see right into it, and um, I think we're going to end up there. I just want to give you a feel for them. Um, these are the uh, Australian and Tonga acros. Got some Montes happening over here. As you can see, there's a ton of holding. There's a little bit more of fresh, wild, stony corals here. God, it's so beautiful. It's uh, definitely hitting a, hitting a saturation point. I've been looking at all this stuff for the last couple of days. More wild acros. All right, so this is going to be the bulk of the, the coral holding here at Live Aquaria. So a little bit of backstory to that clip. I did a walk around of Live Aquaria by myself and um, it was okay. It was fine, it was workable. But then just kind of unexpectedly did a complete walkthrough with Kevin Cohen and it was just so much better. So I almost completely scrapped my entire walkthrough of it by myself. But there was just a couple clips left over I wanted to show you just to show you kind of some of the holding of the facility. Um, it goes without saying, totally forgot about this. If you haven't seen the video walkthrough of Live Aquaria of me with uh, Kevin Cohen, there is some gold in there. You absolutely, if you are a fan of Live Aquaria or high-end fish and great corals, definitely go back to that uh, video, link in the description down below, because Live Aquaria has so many different displays, uh, so much holding capacity, so that was just a small snapshot of their kind of general wild coral holding stock. So um, this is the fish system right here. Or what I say they are. There you go, buddy. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. Got some puffers. And you see, you know, the fish. Just to, to keep it simple, like there's no sand in any of these tanks. I know it makes for a really nice display, but for practicality, it is much better to keep the fish. You know, in a kind of a, a limited system. But here, like for example, there's sand for the fish that need it, so the small wrasses, and um, I think there's a mostly jawfish in these little cubicles. These cubicles are cool too because they just they can take the whole thing off. And it just feeds water through here and it overflows. So that's just a small subsection of their fish holding. They must have 20 times what I just showed you in that small little snippet. And um, I think I must have like, uh, I have a mission, a crusade against sand because other people fetishize sand a little bit too much um, in their own reef tanks. And uh, so that was me talking about how there's no sand in most of the fish systems. And then I talk about how there's sand in the, uh, <clears throat> in the little cubicles for the wrasses and things that need them. And, but here, this is the display tank of Kevin Cohen, and we talk about why he doesn't have sand in this particular display. Man. You're a rass man. This tank is filled with rasses. Of course. There's no sand in here. There's not. Um, so in this aquarium, you can see it's dominated with cerulebris rass and a few paracrinitis rass as well. Um, and, and those types of rass don't need sand to burrow in. They just need uh, you know, some rock work where they can rest against it in the evening. So unlike... All right, okay, so he was just about to say how... Um, Basically, people say they have sand in their tanks because they have wrasses, but it's only a small group of wrasses that really, really make a practice of going under the sand to sleep or to feel comfortable. And these are the leopard wrasses and the chorus wrasses and some of the razor wrasses. So by and large, all the flasher wrasses and all the fairy wrasses we keep in our tanks, they don't, you know, they need some place to hide just like any other fish, but they don't have to have the sand. So stop fetishizing the sand and I'll stop crusading against it. Um, so we were just talking about how the bottom of his tank is covered one of his tanks is covered, covered with encrusting corals. And this is a really cool snapshot of what he thought was a monopora, but this is actually a uh, kind of an encrusting acropora. So this is a acropora cuneata or polyphora, one of its, which would actually make it an isopora. So this is related to acropora. It might be an encrusting acropora, but either way, there's not a money, super cool. They have it in the diver's den and other people sell it often. They just don't really recognize it for what it is. Okay, so uh, like I said, this whole episode is just a shell for me just to show you some amazing eye candy. And this right here 
is an incredible school of Cook Island Ventralis Antheus. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll see that I started out with six Ventralis Antheus, and now I'm down to one very studly male who's very hearty and eats uh, plenty of uh, prepared foods. But here's this Cook Island uh, biotope with 20 Ventralis Antheus and a preview of the uh, Nursalim Ras from Australia. Just, we're gonna see some more clips of this fish, and this is not even like the nuptial displays. This is this guy basically just kind of practicing. And when I first got the live aquaria, I spent a little bit more time just fixated on this particular fish and watching it display and present its fins and just seeing those filaments just go crazy. It was just, just could not stop looking at it. And so this fish is probably, the body was probably about four inches, four inches long. And uh, the fins added like three inches to the end of it. So very, very cool fish. Here is one of my first good clips of the peppermint angel fish. It's not the first one that I'll show you, but uh, wait, it's not the last one I'll show you, but uh, I did get some closer and better clips. This fish, oh, I'm gonna stop talking now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, just, I just got transported just looking at the clips on the big TV because I'm telling you, since I've been back from Live Aquaria, I have definitely uh, just found myself at my computer just looking at the raw clips of that fish. And here's a close up of one of those male uh, Ventralis Antheus from Cook Islands. Just, just a sensational, beautiful fish. One thing I do love about the male Cook Island Ventralis Antheus is that they always look like this. They're not like a fairy or flash your ass. You have to get them to like that perfect stage, that perfect condition. You condition them up, up, up a little bit and they have yellow long fins, pink color, red top, um, and just really, really awesome pattern. Um, I need to get more of these guys soon. Look at his eye, man. Look at his eye just, just lighting up. Oh, woo. you can tell I'm really liking it. Okay, so here's a little bit uh, better close up, a little bit more focused video on the Nurse Limras um, <clears throat> doing his displays and uh, a little bit more focused on him. Again, this is not the nuptial coloration like at night where the, the color will be you know, really, really intensified. You can see from the windows in the background um, that this is still daytime, so it's not dark yet. Um, but this guy, since he doesn't really have much else to do, you can just do that. Ooh wee. You just display all day, all day. And so before you ask, there's actually no females in this particular aquarium. And if I got my hands on a nurse limeras, there's no way I would invest in getting females for him I, uh, of Nursalim. I would just get some regular carpenters, uh, whoa, <laughs> whoa. I would get regular carpenters, fairy asses, or um, just whatever, uh, sorry, flasher asses. I would just get regular female flasher asses. Um, yeah, because it would be like $30 a piece instead of 1500 And this is a really, really cool display right when you walk into Live Aquaria. I mean, just the whole thing, from start to finish, just a giant field of uh, bubble tip anemones and Sanjays. I think these are reverse black photon clownfish. Um, really, really neat display. There's so many clownfish that they can't really fight that much. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, I don't see too many people doing enough, uh, just like a clownfish harem with anemones, but we got some things going on in the studio. I've been building up my anemone collection, so that is definitely in the cards. 
All right, so here's a close-up of kind of one of the small SPS display tanks. Um, right when you walk in, there's a really nice blue squamosa in the bottom left. Um, but what I really want you to see, I think it must have been like six or seven years ago, I first wrote about the branching flower pot corals. And in the last year or so, flower pot corals have exploded in popularity. Meanwhile, Kevin's been growing this amazing like yellow orange strain for five, six years. They have frags of it in the diver's den. Um, I just don't think they've get it, given it enough exposure for people to really appreciate and notice uh, that strain. So these clownfish are really, really cool. Um, I guess it was, would be like a grade A Picasso's. They was, these were some of the first, I believe, shipped out by RA that Kevin's had forever. Um, and you can see the one right there has the little um, the white markings right at the front of the dorsal fin. It looks like it's uh, a lot smaller than it used to be, but either way, the black, orange, and white of these fish is just really, really, truly something to appreciate. And Kevin must have had these, I'm guessing. He's gotta be scratching about 10 years on these. Whew. All right, I hope you guys are enjoying this uh, B-roll. We're about halfway through. And um, this is a really cool tank. I love this tank right here because it's so simple. You could set this tank up overnight. It has maybe a little extra sand, you know, but um, it's just so simple and beautiful. And there's nothing exceptional about it except for the way it looks. It's got a basic light, basic tank, basic corals, basic aquascape, everything. Um, and it's important. It's important to exalt kind of the, the normal beautiful tanks, right? We're not, we don't always have to shatter expectations or, or destroy the envelope uh, to, to make a nice looking reef tank. So within that tank, there was two types of green star polyp. And I really liked how they were juxtaposed. So this one right here that is in focus is Pachyclavularia, which I don't have any of that. And you see it's got that bright green mouth and kind of colored stalk. And right next and behind it uh, is a Briarium. And this is kind of the more common neon, neon green uh, star polyp. So it's actually kind of interesting to note that we have green star polyp, but they come from two fairly different genera. And here's another look at that really, really nice display tank. Um, just some soft corals, some purple rocks, some zoanthids, or some chromis. And this is the kind of tank that you can set up overnight, but you could watch it all day. You could just watch it for a long time. And really, you know, big thumbs up to the people at Live Aquaria who put that together. Here we are getting a rare, very rare look at the coral farm side of Live Aquaria. What's interesting is they're still using metal halides up there with a, you know, super efficient uh, ballasts and reflectors. You guys remember ballasts? Um, but all of the metal halides are actually on track lighting. So they're able to use a single 400 watt metal halide to cover like a six to eight foot stretch. So it's still a very efficient um, uh, application of those metal headlight lights for growth. This is really all about that growth. And if uh, you ever get a chance to go up there, there's some really fun goodies, like these beautiful red diaceras corals that I just, I was really impressed, not just to see one or two, but that they've been propagating the bejesus out of this. I think we called it the lava coals, diaceras, cycloceras, whatever it is, tiny little disc corals, kind of a fuchsia pink color. Um, yeah, really, really cool. I think I picked up two or three for myself here at the studio, and they're just kind of chilling back there. Here's another look at them a little bit more close up. So these are cool, you know. We've seen some fuchsia red, orange, no, fuchsia pink disc corals before. But one thing that is really, really rare, and just we've only, we've only talked about one ever, was this orange and green sandalolitha. So it's similar to a tongue coral, but instead of growing elongated, it kind of grows a little bit more fat. There was one colony ever found so far, and uh, Kevin and the Live Aquaria team, they had the foresight to, uh, instead of selling that one, they put it in heavy propagation, and now they have a bunch of frags, a bunch of different frags of this thing. I think they're calling it the Irish Sunset Sandal Coral, and sandal is short for sandalolitha. Um, this is, objectively a rare coral, not hype. You know, there's only been one calling that was five years ago. We wrote about it uh, when it first came in through eye catching corals, I think. And now it's finally available for sale in the diver's den. So go see if, if they have any pieces left. 
And um, here's a major overview of the propagation center, the nerve center for uh, coral fragging at Live Aquaria. Um, I really like that they have a dedicated space for their coral propagation, so they can make sure that they put stuff up there, it gets brood stocked, it gets propagated, and it's separated um, from all the wild stuff that's uh, kind of coming and going uh, from uh, their general stock in the diver's den. All right, so now we're getting into some of the most uh, sensational fish at Live Aquaria. We've seen the, the, the peppermint angel fish and the nurse limrass. This is the rarest fish of all time. This is a female Pitcairn angelfish. Now these fish, they're mostly whitish. They're whitish, more white than gray, a little bit of a blue crown, a little bit of a blue edge to the dorsal and anal fin. And it's a little bit uninspired if you're not an angelfish lover like myself. But that female, if kept in the right uh, environment, in the right conditions, if you gave it a bunch of similar females, like smaller Watanabe angelfish, um, it might be stimulated to develop into a male spinous angelfish. So it's a Pitcairn angelfish, Janicantha spinous. That is the only one collected in the last 20 years. There was a pair that went to Japan like 20, 25 years ago, but we don't know anything about that one. So as far as we're concerned, that is the only one, the first one ever in you know, the Western world to make it to captivity. And it's still in the diver's den for a cool $9,000, but it is legitimately one of the rarest fish ever, ever uh, made available in the aquarium hobby. All right, so here's another close up of that sensational nurse limb rasp. I think, it's, oh, there it is. This is my best, this is my best uh, footage of this particular guy. It's my best clip. So I'm gonna be quiet and let you guys watch it now. Okay, so a little bit of backstory on the nurse limeras. This was believed to be uh, an endemic of the Bird's Head Peninsula, and it's kind of like their spirit animal that they use to like crusade for that region of the world. It's in the heart of the coral triangle. It's an amazing, amazing fish. They discovered some in Australia, just randomly on a reef that's a thousand kilometers away from uh, that part of Raja Ampat. They look a tiny bit different, a little bit less black. And so that was a fish that we thought we would never, ever, ever see. And now they've been in the diver's den for a little while. Um, so that would be Kevin's personal specimen with super duper long fins. Um, and we believe that the reason it has long fins, or like, like, exaggerated long filaments like that is because in the wild um, other males would be constantly picking at those filaments and so they need to keep growing them out they need to keep growing them so in this environment with nothing to pick on the fins they just get like just almost comically long just it's just like crazy pennant uh, streamers just a beautiful fish it's uh, I think like I said, again it's not a cheap fish it's fifteen hundred dollars but it looks the part you know there's some fish that just they're expensive because of the hype, you know? So like years ago, a gem tang was two or $3,000. Uh, now their price is more in line with, you know, I guess probably the real demand, not just the hype demand. But the Nursa Limras, when you see one with its streamers like that, oh boy, oh boy, it's really, really well worth it. And then if you've watched any videos of mine, you know I always, always save the best for last. So here is my final clip of the Peppermint Angelfish.
So I hope you enjoyed that sensational, just absolutely amazing slow motion 4K close up of one of the most revered, hyped, worshiped fish in the saltwater aquarium world. Um, the way things are going, you know, maybe a pair of these will make it into the hands of a breeder. Uh, Wen Ping Su of Bali Aqua Rich recently bred the other two species from this genus. So he bred the Multibar and the Venustus. So if he could get his hands on some peppermints, we might see a future where this fish might be available. The first initial crop would be super duper expensive, of course, but down the road, if, if production you know, catches up, uh, this fish might actually be unobtainable. Still very expensive, but uh, I just want to thank all of you guys for tuning in. I want to thank Live Aquaria and Kevin Cohen for having me out at the facility. It was such a great time. It's actually really cool to sit here at the studio and kind of like, watch and re-experience uh, the aquariums, the fish, and the corals with you. Uh, I am, like I said, I'm leaving for Australia in two weeks. I am gonna be grinding on some videos. I think this is the third video I've shot this weekend, so we have so much coming out. Definitely subscribe, hit that bell, and uh, be on the lookout for the next ep episode. So, hope everybody's doing well, enjoying your reef tanks, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.